Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I paint peppers. I'm painting red, green, um, an orange and a sort of yellow pepper. So it's quite a variety of colours and um, this is just a sketch. Nothing too detailed and I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please like, subscribe and share with your friends. That helps my channel grow and I'd really appreciate it if you could find time to do that. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. That is so wonderful of you. It's helped me reach a thousand subscribers. This is the palette I use for almost all of my paintings. And I sometimes add other colors to it, but this is the basic palette. Titani titanium white, primary yellow, raw sienna, raw umber, French ultramarine blue, this is hooker's green, but I very often use sap green, I ran out of it, and alizarin crimson. And they are my basic set of colors that I use in every painting. And I should have used um, cadmium red in this one as well, but I didn't have any. So I mix the alizarin with the yellow to give me a sort of orangey red and it was somewhat successful. Anyway, let's get on with it. These are the brushes I put out to use. Uh, it turned out I didn't need the round, but I used the three quarter inch flat, the half inch flat and the um, liner brush. So these are the type of peppers that I want to paint and different colors all um, in different um, positions and interesting in composition. My composition is slightly different to that. I did my sketch on tracing paper and I tried to make them interesting to see. The ones at the back seem to be perched on top of something because they wouldn't be that tall in real life. Um, but you can see the tops of them and that's an interesting thing and um, that's what the painting is all about to trying to make something that grabs the eye that holds it and makes the eye wander around the composition I transferred my sketch onto a 9 by 12 panel and as you can see it's a little faint so a little trick I have is to use a marker to strengthen up those lines And as you can see, it makes a world of difference. You can see what you're doing. And it is a um, waterproof marker, I think, that I used. Um, you don't want to use your sketch as a coloring book. You don't have to color inside the lines. You just want to use your sketch as a guideline. And But it's helpful if you see the lines through the paint. Um, it sort of keeps things in check. You don't want to um, overpaint so much that you lose the shape and composition. Now it's my usual practice to cover the entire canvas with a mid-tone color, one to which I can add my shadows and highlights and give the painting some form. In this particular painting, I think I got a little muddled here and there, but here I'm mixing up a mid-tone green and I'm going to start with the green pepper first. This pepper actually ends up being yellow, but it does have a little bit of a green undertone to it. It's the least finished of the peppers, one I'm not particularly proud of to be absolutely honest, but the rest of them turned out quite well as you'll see. And so I'm doing these two outside ones green. A 
I'm just swiping the colours on using the flat of my brush and as you can see you can still see the lines of my drawing through um, the paint. I'm going to do the red one next. Now alizarin crimson is quite transparent so you'll definitely see the lines through that. Every painting that I do starts off looking like something you'd want to throw in the garbage but you have to persevere and eventually you'll get it refined enough with putting bits in, taking bits out, over painting things and you'll refine it until you get all your um, lines in the correct places, all your shadows and highlights in the correct places. I'm using primary yellow and alizarin crimson to make an orange but I suspect it's not going to be bright enough and there's a way you can get around this if you don't have an orange straight from the tube. Um, you can paint titanium white onto um, the subject and then paint the um, transparent colour over it and the white will shine through and brighten it up no end. I, I do this all the time. Um, I think I might have the orange. I just have to look for it. Well, we're not there yet, but things are beginning to look a little better. I'm okay with the progress I'm making. I need a shadow colour and raw umber makes a great shadow. So I'm mixing alizarin crimson with it, they're both transparent and I'm going to use that in the creases of the pepper. And I just paint straight stripes of this down, I, I'm not too fussy about how I put this on because I'll be going over it with another coat of alizarin. And that is often how you paint with acrylics, you paint in glazes. Um, when you're painting in oils, the colours tend to mix right on the canvas and um, they're much more opaque, I find, water mixable oils, which is what I often paint with. Um, when I'm painting with acrylics, I often use glazes. When I'm painting roses, anything, almost anything really, I paint it in layers. It still looks very rough. And I'm not worried about that. As I go on, things will refine. And that's what painting is all about. Re refining things, adding highlights and shadows and um, tinkering. I think that's a good word for the way I paint. I tinker with the painting. After I've got my mid-tone on, it's all a matter of tinkering with the painting until I get it how I want it. You have to have a little patience.
I found my orange paint. I think it's called Pyrole Orange. And I'm going to use that on my orange pepper, but also on my red pepper to help give it a little brightness. I've mixed it with alizarin and I think that's giving a better pepper colour. Um, it still needs more highlights, but it's improving. Peppers are so interesting to paint because of their shape. These lobes give you highlights and shadows to work on and um, it just makes painting interesting. I think I didn't develop the yellow pepper well enough and um, it, it doesn't spoil the painting because it it is just there. It's not the uh, star of the painting anyway and I think the red pepper in front is it for me. And um, But I could have put more detail, more highlight and shadow in that and it would have improved it no end. I think they're beginning to look more pepper-like. I'm beginning to feel a bit better about them. I love raw umber as a neutral shadow. It's great for grounding things. Um, I use it on anything I need a shadow beneath and uh, like these peppers sitting on a table and um, I think I used it as the shadow in the lobes of the peppers. Um, it's just one of those nice neutrals, uh, so useful in almost anything. I'm making a reflection in the tabletop just by putting a swipe of colour underneath the pepper and then pulling it downwards in a downward stroke with the flat of my brush and that gives the illusion of a reflection.
For a darker shadow I mix French ultramarine blue and raw amber. I find this makes a very good dark. I, I don't buy black paint or grey paint because I find those two colours, French ultramarine blue and raw amber, can be mixed to um, the, from the darkest to the palest gradient. It's a very useful combination. I'm not worried about making these shadows too wide because I'll go over it with the Lizarin Crimson and um, just stroking the paint over the shadow will make it um, sort of combine and give me a depth to the shadow and a gradient on the um, highlight area. That's one of the nice things about painting in acrylics. You can do that. Painting in glazes gives you a lot of depth to um, your painting. The stems are not showing up as brightly as I wanted them to and uh, so I'm painting them with um, titanium white. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to repaint them with the greens and that should give me a brighter looking stem, one that shows up against the peppers.
I see I did add some raw sienna as shadow on the yellow pepper. I don't know what happened to that pepper. I sort of gave up on it at some point and didn't develop it properly. So we'll have to let that one go. Um, there's nothing I can do about it now. I've finished the painting, taken all the pictures. I just didn't spend enough time looking at my painting. That's something I usually do. I usually sit back and have a cup of tea and look at my painting for 10-15 minutes and decide what needs to be adjusted. And I didn't do that in this case. I just finished the painting, took the pictures and that was it. And obviously I didn't finish the yellow pepper. If I had noticed that, I would have finished that as well. When you add a highlight, there's, I don't know if I can say this right, there's a highlight within the highlight or on top of the highlight. There's a highlight and then an even brighter highlight on top of that. It's like grapes. When you look at grapes, they're a bit sort of misty looking, aren't they? They have a sort of haziness about them. And then there's a brightness on top of that. So you get your dark shadow and then you get a pale, a mid-tone, and then you get a haze on top of that, and then you get a highlight. That's the best I can do in description. My painting style is quite loose. I don't go in for photorealism. I love that work, but I know I couldn't do that. It would kill me. Um, Bob Ross was my first teacher. He was so brilliant and gave me the courage to be able to paint. And um, it, I, I did two of his books before I went to a real-time teacher and took lessons. And uh, my first teacher called me his disaster lady. That's how bad I was. But I loved it so much. I just kept on going. I just have been painting for 30 years and I enjoy every second of it.
Well, I did go in without turning my camera on and strengthen up a few of the highlights and also the reflection underneath. Um, I thought that could be brighter and I do think it looks better. I added little highlights everywhere, as I said, and I did a little work on that yellow pepper. I still don't think it looks great. I'm not pleased with that one. We'll just forget that one. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up share with your friends and please subscribe that helps my channel grow i really appreciate it if you could do that and thank you very much for watching and thank you a hundred times if you've already subscribed to me that's so brilliant i've managed to reach a thousand um, subscribers so i'm super pleased about that and um do post any paintings that you make i would love to see what you're doing and Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.